and Happy New Year. This is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. Episode 522. I'm your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility through this medium since 2005. Today, we are talking about, with me, I'm the guest, I'm your host and guest, talking about year in review. Okay, just a little like peek back on 2020, because let's be honest, it was a year, and looking ahead to 2021. I'll also share some ideas on what you can expect here at Tranquility Du Jour in the new year. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. Let's dive in. It's a reminder that you can find the show notes to this podcast at KimberlyWilson.com slash 522. Also, be sure to hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app, such as Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon, or Overcast. And I've got links to all of these in the show notes. Also, visit KimberlyWilson.com slash podcast for more episodes, including the Tranquility Du Jour podcast app available for iPhones and Androids, so that you can have access to all of those old episodes. And those of you who are new to Tranquility Du Jour, a big, big welcome. And there's a link also in the show notes that will help show you around a little bit and get you familiar with everything that we offer. Also, I wanted to mention two things that are happening right now. One is the Tranquility Du Jour annual pass. So this pass gives you access to 25 events throughout the year, a private community, I'm calling it a collective because I think it sounds sexier, um, co-creating sessions, uh, virtual retreats, all sorts of goodness. If you're interested, check out KimberlyWilson.com slash 2021. And of course, there is a link to this in the show notes. And those of you who are free on Sunday night, January 10th from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, I'm hosting the seasonal TDJ Live. Now, this is a masterclass that I host every quarter at the start of a new season to do a little bit of reflection, a little intention setting, and then also, of course, exploring eight new tranquility tools for that season. So I hope to see you on Sunday. There's a link again to sign up. It's a free event. And We do this via YouTube, so it's really nice and easy. There is a chat feature, but videos aren't shown. So no pressure. Would love, love, love to have you if you are free. One thing I think I know about you is that you also love books. And we all know it can be tricky to find the time, which is why Audible is an excellent resource. You can listen anywhere from various devices, your iPhone, tablet, computer, and you pick up where you left off. Audible has hundreds of thousands of titles, including our online book club pick of January, which is Happiness Becomes You by Tina Turner. Sign up for a free 30-day trial and your first book is free at audibletrial.com slash tranquility du jour. So without further ado, let me start with a poem that I shared at the New Year's virtual retreat on a Friday. And by the way, with that, I'll probably have a replay available and for sale in the next week or two for anyone who would be interested and missed us and would like to go through the three hours on your own, really diving into my whole thing that I'm going to do a little bit of talking about today, about walking you through this process of tying a bow around on one year and opening the door into another. All right. So the poem is by Naomi Shihab Ni. It's called Burning the Old Year. Letters swallow themselves in seconds. Notes friends tied to the doorknob. Transparent scarlet paper. Sizzle like moth wings. Marry the air. So much of any year is flammable. Lists of vegetables, partial poems, orange swirling flame of days, so little is a stone. Where there was something and suddenly isn't, an absent shout celebrates leaves a space. I begin again with the smallest numbers. Quick dance 
shuffle of losses and leaves, only the things I didn't do crackle after the blazing dies. So what I love about this poem and in reading a bit about the translation of it is that this poem clearly, it's symbolic of cleaning out the old, kind of those inconsequential things at the end of the year and realizing what's left for the new year. So she writes of bits of paper, lists, and notes that disintegrate into the air as they burn in the fire. This symbolizes the dispensable minutia of life. And this is from enotes.com. All right. So what is really I love about this is you think about it, you know, all these things like the vegetables, you know, the to-do list, the different things we've written down. And really, you know, all that minutia, of course, it makes up life. But also that stuff is dispensable. What about those really sweet moments that we want to hold on to and carry into the new year? So I hope that's helpful as you really kind of think about this, this uh, this uh, kind of quality of what it is you want to carry into 2021. So last weekend, I sat down to do a bit of reflection on the year. And what I love doing is I like going through like all sorts of data. So from, you know, donations to classes I took, that was actually my favorite thing, um, you know, to... Um, I even estimated the amount of tea that I sipped <laughs> last year. Um, also, the events that I hosted. So I kind of, I like to pull all of this together in a way that just like gives a bit of a, a big picture. You know, the thing about doing a year in review, and I do have a link to this blog post in the show notes, which again are at KimberlyWilson.com slash 522. So in this... What I like to do is go through my planner and just note, okay, what are the things that I had in there as like events or big projects or things like that? Those help jolt the memory. And then, of course, going through the phone to look at photos to remember the various things that happened. I also like, of course, going through the blog because there's a lot of data and there are things that are captured that is just so easy to forget. One thing, too, that I really, really like and I'm super duper proud of, and I know it's small compared to a lot of people out there, but I read 36 books, and so I completed my Goodreads challenge. And I will say it's the first time I have put in 36 books. It's usually 24. Usually I hit it, but not always. So this year I pushed myself, added an additional 12. Well, for 2021, I'm pushing myself even more, and I'm adding an additional 12 to 48. There was one woman, Kat, who was in our New Year's virtual retreat who read like 150 books last year. And she said her tip was audible at two times. So meaning at two times speed of the reader, right? And that was how she got through basically three books a week. Isn't that impressive? So that's one of the things, too, that I like to do a little reflection on, right? Of like, what did I read? Like, how did I spend my time? So I'm going to go through my list. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but just share a few highlights. So this was great. This was fun to see as I took 190 ballet classes, nearly 70 yoga, and then I have some bar and hip hop. I have a list of the various things I hosted from virtual retreats to kind of pop-up events. I released 20 videos last year and 16 were Tea with Kimberly, and you can find all those over on the YouTube channel. Released 44 podcasts, sent 50 love notes, and here's my estimate, drank a thousand cups of tea, estimated, because I'm like, I have at least three a day, so that's where I got that. Um, you know, one thing that was really sweet that we were doing early in the pandemic. And then now, of course, we're doing um, now that it's cold outside is we were doing campfires at night and then uh, little bonfires out back. And then now, of course, we're sitting fireside like constantly. So this I really love this connection to fire and, you know, this idea of you know, it's just me and my partner and the dogs, <laughs> but it's just this idea of like community, right? Of just being around a fire and connecting. I celebrated 16 years with my partner, um, Tim. One big thing too, from a branding perspective of sorts, is I shifted Tranquility, the clothing line that I've had since 2002. So I was 18 years old to TDJ is the label. Just the name is TDJ. And I took it all to all black. 
And I have a whole thing on the 10, 10 reasons I did that, which you can find, of course, at KimberlyWilson.com slash TDJ. Before the pandemic hit, I got in two ballets at the Kennedy Center, which was really lovely. I attended two George Floyd p- protests. I also um, marched in the Women's March. I completed my veterinary social work criteria. I took all of the classes and did the online week-long summit. And now I just have to do my final Keystone project, which is a 250-hour kind of volunteer project. And um, right now what I'm doing is hosting pet loss groups, pet loss support groups. So if you all are interested in free on January 18th, that's my next one. And just reach out and I'd be happy to give you all the information for that. One fun thing is I I, um, hosted a virtual live jazz birthday party. So we, through Airbnb experiences, we got in contact with this amazing musician out of London who did a private event. And anyone can do this, actually. And then I just invited a group of friends to join. And so that was a really sweet, fun thing. And you know what I love is I got a holiday card from a friend of mine. And she said it was her boys. Her boys are probably like eight and five. It was the highlight of their year is their favorite online experience. They were adorable. They showed up in freaking tuxedos. (laughs) tuxedos and dance throughout the event. It was absolutely adorable. But I'm like, oh my gosh, who knew that some 47 year olds like virtual birthday party with like live jazz music was these kids highlight. I just love that. Um, saw Garth at his drive-in concert tour, which was super fun. Um, Mookie, our dog, was named Dog of the Month at a winery and Pet of the Month at daycare or Pet of the Week at daycare, which like I was so excited about because the dog is a hot mess. Um, one thing I did too is I got to quite a few museums. So some before the pandemic hit, and then some after where, you know, it was like really limited in the number of people that could come and of course masks and all of that. So I got to see Degas at the opera, which is something I saw in Paris in 2019 and loved. It was here in DC. And when the museums opened up, back up. I was down there with bells on. And then also Hillwood Estate. I became a member there. And it's just so, so beautiful. It's this really lovely gym in the city. And anyone who's listening who does not live in DC, you can check them out. I have a link in the show notes because they do a lot of virtual things also. I mean, now so many people are, right? One kind of challenging thing is I found out I needed a hip replacement. (laughs) And um, but I have a cortisone shot for now that is getting me through surprisingly well. And um, I watched The Nutcracker and I kind of tried to dance along on Christmas Eve, which was just very, very sweet. So those are just some of the highlights. Also donated $6,000 through various Tranquility Du Jour offerings. Thank you guys for all of your support and um, planted 1,000 trees. So it's been a really, I think, a very, very sweet year, despite the incredibly big challenges. So in reflection, one of the things that I mentioned is that I accomplished, I think, about 70% of my 2020 dreams. So that felt good, right? Um, but of course, there were some that didn't didn't happen. And I kind of wrote a little bit about why. Um, you know, some of the pending ones, they're more strategic, and they weren't really smart goals, so to speak. And I'll tell you in a moment what I mean by that. So one was increase pigs and pugs project awareness. So that's our nonprofit. And, um, you know, we donate money to pig sanctuaries, pug rescues, and host events, which, of course, they were all canceled in 2020. But, you know, it's like saying increase pigs and pugs project awareness. It's hard to know, like, how did I do that, right? I didn't have a SMART goal. It's specific, but it's not measurable. It didn't say increase to what. Um, it's uh, it's achievable. I mean, yeah, it's achievable. It wasn't measurable, though. And um, is it uh, is it like relevant? abso freaking lutely And T, is it time bound? Not really. I mean, I guess I would say increase within the year 2020. But again, I, there's no way to measure this. So that's the one I was like, oh, I didn't. I mean, how do you even say if you accomplish that? Learning projects. These are ones that also are pending. It's just like doing many of the online courses I sign up for. I love professional and personal development. Love, love, love. Could do that full time. And so I tend to get really excited and sign up for a lot of things. And there's a lot that are pending right now. And then that darn memoir proposal. 
continues. Uh, 2021, I think, is the year. Um, but that I and I do feel like I've turned a corner on it. And the fact that I do definitely think I'm much more on target with where I want to go with it. And I've been kind of flailing a bit the past few years with it. So whenever you're not quite sure the direction, it can be hard to write into it. I know that's what they say you're supposed to do, but that's not necessarily me. I like a bit more of a roadmap. And I kind of feel like towards the end of 2020, I got a roadmap. And so I am working on that. So as I look ahead, right, to 2021, the big priorities I see are the memoir, content creation for you, especially my annual pass holders. My gosh, I have so many fun things up my sleeve for you guys, ongoing professional development, relationships, and health. So those are kind of the big things that I feel like are around the corner and or really my focus this year. So for you, I encourage you to do a little bit of thinking with regard to your year and what lies ahead. So, you know, two questions that I think are really, really helpful that I encourage you to ponder is number one, what worked for me in 2020? So think of your highlights, your experiences, your rituals, your thought patterns, your practices. And then next is think about what didn't work for me. What are your challenges? I mean, Lord knows we were challenged in 2020. Your poor habits. I mean, I think some of us developed quite a bit of them in 2020. Lack of routine, disconnection. So those are some ideas of things that may not have worked for you. So number one, what worked for me? And number two, what didn't work for me? So again, just helpful questions to ask yourself. The other thing I would encourage you to do is write a letter to your future self. So picture yourself a year from today, having accomplished or taken steps toward accomplishing your year's dreams, right? So really getting clear on what are these dreams? What do you want to see for yourself? What do you want to, um, you know, as you look back on this year and be like, ah, I did it. I did that. I had a morning routine. I increased my water intake. I walked X amount of steps. I read X amount of books. I, you know, was kind to my partner every day or gave a compliment or something, right? So, so picturing yourself a year from today, having accomplished or taken steps toward accomplishing your year's dreams. And notice how do you feel where are you? What are you doing? What are you eating? Who are you with? What are you wearing? And what I want you to do is pin yourself a letter to open at the end of the year and write it in the present tense. For example, I'm so glad you made self-care a priority this year. You're now sleeping through the night, eating more whole foods, and doing yoga three times a week. Right. And then the idea is just like keep going and bring those action steps to life. Like as you think about this idea of your your overall kind of future self. Okay. If your goal is to eat more whole foods, do yoga three times a week, sleep through the night, what are your action steps to get yourself there? So it can be really helpful to think big picture and then funnel it down into everyday action steps. So word of the year, I wanted to share, okay, what is my word of the year? I have to say, I've been marinating on this for quite a few days. And right before recording this podcast, I took Gizmo out on a walk. (laughs) He's quite slow. So it's a very slow, reflective journey. And, you know, the thing I I just like the word of the year to me is it's very important, right? It's just like one of those things where I I really want to make sure it's right. And I just was asking myself, okay, what is the big thing that you really want to do in 2021? And the thing that keeps coming up for me is this idea of content creation, right? So creating more stuff for you guys and then, and of course, the memoir. And so I was like, you know, I think my word is, well, no, I know my word. I have chosen this word, create. So content creation, big thing. Memoir, big thing. Making sure creative practices are part of my everyday, big thing, right? So create, create, create. One podcast, ladies and gents, that I have coming up for you is an amazing guy who's been on the podcast before, Eric Maisel, and talking all about the importance of a daily creative practice. 
So I can't wait to share that with you. And I can't wait to re-listen to it and, um, and, and learn more of his amazing tips because he is a perfect example of doing this and doing this so beautifully and writing a freaking book a year. I think he has like 30 books out there. So my word of the year is create. And what I want to ask you to consider, you may not know your word or your theme yet, and that is okay. Sit with it. It may not come to you until mid-2021, and that is okay too. But just see what is coming up for you. What is it that When you think about those dreams that you have for 2021, that you're really excited about making an overall theme around, right? And, you know, your theme could even be like a visual, right? It may be um, an image of like this beautiful, colorful plate. And you're like, I'm going to eat more whole foods. I'm just going to be healthier in general. So health maybe is, you know, your theme and that you've got this beautiful visual as a great reminder of it. So I encourage you to think about that. What is it that you want to bring forth in the new year? How do you want to show up? And how can you regularly check in with yourself to see how you're doing? So for me, you know, like say, is there something I, I'm contemplating adding to my plate? Okay, I'll ask myself, well, does that contribute to my word of the year, my theme of the year, my create? If not, it's distracting me and I want to probably say no to that opportunity because my focus is on creating this year. So I hope that's helpful as you think about your own word of the year. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is what to expect here at Tranquility Du Jour in 2021. Now, I did a blog post about this late December, and of course, I have a link to that also in the show notes, but I wanted to kind of read through it with you a little bit and then give you one other little nugget that I have not shared yet. So, of course, for seasonal TDJ Lives, that is an annual tradition. For virtual retreats, I typically just do two to three. So four is a big uh, addition for me. A virtual Pigs and Pugs event, since we weren't able to have any last year. Weekly podcasts. Now, this is the one that I want to mention. Okay, so I am thinking I want to continue the weekly for you all. But what I'm wondering and debating is in between every week that I have an interview is that I just do a little musing. I mean, it may be very short, but on something that is pertinent that's coming up in my life or coming up in our community at that time, that would be helpful to just share a little bit of, you know, tranquility infused um, ideas around. So I hope that excites you because that's what I'm thinking will be a nice breakup in between all the beautiful interviews that we bring to you because um, there's so many wonderful people out there that I love connecting with in the interview format and have for 15 years. But I'm thinking too, it might be nice to just interject my voice a little bit more so that I can connect more one-on-one-ish with you guys. So let me know what you think. Just um, drop me a note and let me know. Um, Weekly love notes. And you sign up for those, uh, KimberlyWilson.com slash love note, uh, weekly blog, pa- blog posts. So what I'm trying to do now is align my weekly blog posts with the podcast theme. And of course, those all fall under our five tranquility du jour tenants, compassion, style, wellness, mindfulness, and creativity. Monthly tea with Kimberly videos a spring TDJ lifestyle e-course. So we did it in the fall. We launched it and this would be the spring version. I want to update treasures. Now this is the back end, the private password protected page that everyone who signs up for the newsletter gets access to. I just want to clean it up, add some new things. Our monthly online book club picks continue. And this month's is Happiness Becomes You by Tina Turner, which I'm super duper excited about. And we talk a bit about that over in the TDJ Insiders Facebook group. There's a link to that in the show notes. Would love to have you join us. A few weekly Instagram and Facebook posts, recipes and plant love to the TDJ Eat Plants Facebook group, and then lots of VIP love to the ultimate TDJ offering, which is the annual pass. So that is kind of a, the the nutshell, <laughs> plans in the nutshell um, for 2021 for Tranquility Du Jour. And of course, with my work, that all ties into it uh, because in, in addition to this work, it's also 
okay, designing for the clothing line and all the kind of administrative and creative work that goes into that. And then, of course, working with my therapy clients, which is the majority of my time. And uh, I just absolutely love, love, love that. And I feel so honored to be able to do that work. So that's kind of my <laughs> my year in a nutshell, my thoughts. And I would love kind of your um, feedback on it. How does that feel to you, sound to you, especially as we think about the podcast in general? Now, in the show notes, I have a link to the Tranquility Du Jour Daybook. I mentioned kind of going through the planner process to plan your year and to also review your year. And this is one that I have created. There's also Year of Tranquility, which is similar to the Daybook, except it doesn't have 52 weekly spreads. Instead, it's more of a monthly lifestyle kind of planner. It's bigger picture and it has 12 essays on things ranging from dreams to love to style to entrepreneurship to writing, things along those lines. I also have a link to my year in review and what to expect in 2021. And finally, if you have a moment to pen a review of this show on Apple Podcasts or any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads, I would be so, so grateful. It really means a lot to me. And my hope is that it helps other people find more tranquility in their lives. So I wish you a delightful, phenomenal week and year ahead. Thank you as always for tuning in. And if there's anything that I can do to serve you better, please do not hesitate to reach out. Hello at KimberlyWilson.com. I hope to see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Namaste. Thank you.